Hello and welcome to our course, Arts of the Western World, for this Summer 2 2013 session at Temple University. Our course will run from July 8th through August 16th. My name is Jasmine Cloud. I am a PhD candidate in the Art History Department at Temple and I will be your instructor for the summer. My specialty is the art of the Italian Baroque, specifically architecture and urbanism in Rome. So this is our first video. You'll have a series of videos over the course of the semester, as well as a number of activities to go along with each different module. Uh, this course covers basically the entire history of art from ancient Egypt until art of the early 21st century, which is when we're currently in. Um, what I want to do today is talk a little bit about what this course is going to be like. I want to talk about what is art history. I want to show you the syllabus and our Blackboard site, which you will need to be very familiar with. And I'd also like to talk about what you can expect to learn. This course is worth four credit hours, and what that means is that it's actually going to be quite a bit of work for this summer. Every single week you will have three to four modules to complete. There are also a number of readings from the textbook, A History of Western Art by Laurie Schneider Adams, the fifth edition. There will also be some supplemental readings posted on Blackboard. Following the readings, there will be a video posted on YouTube that you will need to watch that has me lecturing. It will be about an hour long video for each one. Following that, there are a number of activities. There will always be a self-assessment. This is a link to a simple quiz just to get a sense of where you are. These aren't counted for a grade, they count towards your participation, but after having done the readings and after having listened to the lecture, it's a good, it's a good activity to do so I know where you are so you know where you are. Following that, there's typically a discussion board. I will give you a prompt, sometimes a website to consider. Often we will have audio posts where I want to hear your voice and hear you using the vocabulary that we're learning together this summer session. Also, there are a number of journal entries. And again, I will give you prompts and parameters for all of these things. So what is it that you can expect to learn over the course of this summer? Well, one of the things that we're going to be doing in talking about art history is we're going to be looking at a number of major monuments, things that you have almost certainly seen before. For example, here we have the Parthenon in Athens. This dates to the 4th century BCE in the classical period of Athens. Why are we so fascinated with buildings like this? Why do we look to Greek architecture and Greek sculpture as uh, a, pa a paradigm for what art should look like and why do our buildings still look like this today? That's something we'll be talking about. We'll also consider such things as this colossal statue of the Emperor Constantine. If you've been to Rome, you might have seen this in the Capitoline Museums. Why is a head of an emperor, his arm, his kneecap, and this hand so important? Why is it worth studying? Also, we'll move into the Italian Renaissance after covering the, the ancient world, uh, including this work um, that I'm sure you've seen before by Leonardo da Vinci called The Last Supper. Why has this work been such an enigma? So not only will we be talking about architecture and sculpture like I just showed you, but we'll be talking about painting, which I think is a very common medium that people think of when they think of art history. We'll talk about who Leonardo painted this for, where it is, why he painted it. So for each of our objects, we'll be thinking about such things as context, who commissioned it, who paid for it. We'll be thinking about things like subject, what is the Last Supper, what's happening in the scene, how is Leonardo showing it differently than other people. And then we'll also think about things like style, why do we call this uh, the, or the Renaissance, what characteristics does it have that shows that it is a Renaissance painting. We will eventually move into the 20th and 21st century towards the end of the course, and we'll ask questions like, does this Jackson Pollock piece called Autumn Rhythm, is this something that just anybody can do? So one of the things I want you to think about, especially today for our discussion board at this module, module one, the introductory, is what is art? Well, how do we classify it? What kind of definition can we give it? What is not art? Do you really think that your little brother can do this? I'm not so sure that that's true. So we'll be thinking about issues such as that. And finally, here's a good example of something from the very late 20th century and an artist who's still working into the 21st century. This is called Running Fence by Cristo. Is this curtain billowing in the breeze? Why, why is this art? Is this art? So I'm interested to hear uh, what you have to say about these things. So, our history covers a lot of different topics. We have all sorts of different objects. Um, that's something that's very important is the object itself. 
obviously in the name art history, that means we're going to be talking about a lot of history. We cannot talk about these objects without understanding the context that they come from, where they are in the world, uh, what was happening around them political, politically, socially, uh, what was the economic situation. Uh, and it's interesting, especially when we get into the 19th and 20th and 21st century, artists are start, to, start doing things for themselves. They're not doing it because somebody is paying them to do it. We'll also be looking at how does art change over time? This billowing curtain is quite different than the Parthenon, for example, and yet we're studying both of these things in the course of the, of the six weeks of our class. So we're going to be learning a lot of different things, monuments, history, how to describe these objects. That's something I'm going to be very interested in having you learn uh, is how to develop a vocabulary. How will you talk about an object you've never seen before? Just to give you a few tools uh, and new ways to look at things, sort of questions to ask yourself when you encounter a new object. So for example, I wanted to show you these two images. Both of them show a landscape. Both have rivers or some kind of body of water. Both have trees, but they're done in a really different way. But we read them both the same as a landscape. On the left, for example, we have this pencil drawing that has been done to be as naturalistic as possible. But if you saw it from far away, you might even think it was a photograph, that it really evokes the sense of the place. Whereas on the right side, we have what we would call a stylized version of this. You don't have nearly as many pencil strokes creating these trees, creating these rocks. You have shading lines that you can actually see, and yet we still read it as a landscape. So this is just a, an example of how art can be considered different things, how two things that look very different may represent the same object and what that means for us exactly. The syllabus is going to be your Bible for this short summer session. I wanted to walk you through it because there's a lot of information in it and a lot of things I wanted to make clear to you. So um, the first thing we have here is my contact information. Uh, you can feel free to email me at any time with any question. I will respond as quickly as I can. I also have included my Skype name here so that if you want to set up an appointment with me via Skype, we can actually talk face-to-face, -face, as face-to-face -face as we possibly can in an online course. Below that, you see the course information. As I said, you are getting four credit hours for this course. We will be holding everything online. For the most part, you will be doing work on your own, but as I will tell you in just a minute, uh, we do also have some virtual meetings to take care of. So the basis of this course is an introduction to the visual arts of the Western world. We're going to be focusing mostly on Europe and on North America, mostly the United States, and we're looking at prehistory all the way to the present day. The course, as I mentioned, will be delivered online over the course of six weeks during the Summer 2 session. As I said also before, you have three to four modules per week, um, watching a video, conducting readings, and also doing a number of activities. Also, each week, starting the second week of class, we will be meeting virtually via WebEx. We will do, agree mutually on the best time for us to meet. I'm looking towards the end of the week, Friday or Saturday, for these meetings so that you have time to complete the modules. As you'll see once we look at the Blackboard page, each module has a due date so that when we finally meet in person together, that we're all on the same page. So by the end of this course, I want you to recognize some of the major monuments of architecture, sculpture, and painting, and understand them a little better than maybe you did before. I also want to work on, as I said, describing and evaluating a work of art. How does somebody actually talk about art? Also, I want to, also I want to, we want to look at the context, the function, and the meaning of this work of art. What can this object tell us about the society? I have a number of expectations for this summer. The most important thing is going to be good time management. A summer course contains the exact same amount of information that would be delivered in a 15-week semester. So that means it's done very quickly. It will take you about 8 to 10 hours of work a week throughout the duration of the course. That's the same as if you were attending a summer course in a classroom. I've taught a number of those as well. And for that, you meet six, seven total hours in the classroom, plus you have work to do outside of class. So you need to practice good time management skills. That is why there are deadlines for each module. You also are responsible for checking your temple email every single day. This is our only form of communication. You need to be available via email. It is also required that you attend our virtual weekly meeting. And as I mentioned above, this will start in week two, and we'll be meeting for about an hour at a time. 
In that, I expect more than just attendance, but also participation. And we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, as we move forward. And I've sort of stressed this already, but it's very important you meet all of the deadlines. In order to have the most productive meeting as possible, in order for you to learn as well as possible, and to be prepared for your assignments, your weekly quizzes, your paper that you will be doing, it's very important that we're all on the same page, that we're all prepared in the exact same way for the weekly meeting. From you, your peers should expect the following, that you participate in our weekly meetings, uh, but also online and the activities where you'll be interacting with your classmates. Also, there will be a few group activities that you'll be expected to pull your weight in. It's also very important that in all of our interactions, despite the fact that you're only looking at a computer screen, that you're typing to somebody that you're not in the same room as, you need to be respectful in all situations. This is just as if we were in a classroom together. Imagine that this is your colleague and your peer sitting next to you. Be careful with what you say and please phrase everything in the most respectful manner possible. Also, if you have a question, please ask it. Chances are that the, another person has the same question. I'm happy to answer them. And your peers are also really great resources for this. I mentioned that because I've set up a Facebook page, which I'll show you in a few minutes, that all of you will need to join, which will be a really nice, fast way for us to communicate different things to each other, for you to ask your uh, classmates a question, to ask me questions, etc. So what can you expect from me? You can expect a very prompt response to email within 24 hours. If for some reason that won't be the case, I will be sure to let you know in advance. Additionally, I will also stay on top of grading and all feedback because in the same way that you have a lot of work to do in a very short amount of time, I do too. So I will make sure that I'm meeting deadlines just the same as you are. Also, I will be available to chat on Temple Mail or by Skype, as I mentioned before. Also, I'll be interested in hearing your feedback as we progress throughout the semester. Um, I want to hear how the learning is going, how the course experiences and what thing what 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 might be improved upon in the future how I can make things better there are a few things that you need to take this course I already mentioned the textbook here is more information about it written down um, like I said in the email our history books are very expensive consider renting a copy uh, that's available through Amazon you can get it on your Kindle also the bookstore of course but art history books are expensive also, there are supplementary readings posted to each module on Blackboard. It is very important that you have internet access. You will need to be on an actual computer for our in-person meetings. Uh, it will not work on your iPhone or any other kind of smartphone. Um, you'll also need a computer that has a microphone and a webcam like I'm using right now. In our weekly meetings, we will all be seen on camera together. So we will all, it will be as if we were in a classroom. I also very strongly encourage you to get a headset to participate in these. I'm not modeling this very well myself right now because I have the wrong kind of headphones right now, but that will help eliminate all background noise and prevent other kinds of feedback. Again, I'm going to stress that you need to check again, I'm going to stress that you need to check your email. It is your responsibility to keep up with all announcements made via email made on Blackboard made through the Facebook page, please be. Also, each module has a due date. Activities for that module must be completed by midnight on that date, everything. Do not wait until the last five minutes to complete something that is just asking for trouble. These are non-negotiable due dates. They're in place for a reason. Uh, also, we will be using some third-party sites such as Facebook, which I've already mentioned. Also, um, things such as test mods, which your self-assessments will be on. This offers free registration, and actually with test mods, there's no registration necessary. Uh, and on Facebook, if you're not already on Facebook, you can create a profile for free and put your settings to completely private so that no one can find you at all. Finally, as I mentioned before, participation in all course activities is required in order for you to pass this course. What I mean by that is in the discussion board, this will appear in almost every module. When a prompt is assigned, you need to contribute at least once and also respond at least twice to your classmates. These don't have to be extremely formal, but please avoid using texting language. There are also several journal entries due throughout the semester. Um, these should be well thought out. They should be proofread. I expect these to be like a paper you're handing in during class. The Vocabulary Wiki is a group uh, project that you'll be doing each week, starting week two. I'm taking care of it for week one, but then I will divide you into three groups, and at that point, you'll be responsible for the vocabulary 
or uh, one module per week. Also, as I mentioned before, you'll have a number of audio posts where I will ask you to choose an object either from the book or from a museum website so that you can practice your visual analysis out loud. It's one thing to hear me describe it in video, but if you were in a classroom with me, I would be asking you to do this. So this is an opportunity for you to try it yourself. If you're not happy with your first attempt, you can always re-record these. Also beginning with module two, there will be a self-assessment after each video. As I said before, uh, this is to evaluate your own learning. The grade that you get is not going to hurt you. Uh, it's not going to benefit your grade, but it's very important you complete this so that we both, you and I, can know where you stand with this material. Also, you are responsible for attending the virtual meetings. Uh, we will decide on a mutually acceptable time at the end of the first week. And this is where you can ask questions, um, practice your skills and concepts, um, before you start the weekly quiz. And finally, that weekly quiz will be emailed to you after our virtual meeting. These need to be uh, proofread and spell checked. These should be like a paper that you are turning in. Also, there is a final paper. It's very straightforward. It's a two to three page visual analysis. You will find an example of a visual analysis on our Blackboard site. This is a project that will be built up over the course of smaller submissions. I think you have a total of four different paper submissions over the course of the six weeks. This is a, something that you choose from wherever you are this summer. You find an object that you want to work on, um, and then you get to write about that. So there's a lot of flexibility here. Here we see the evaluation and grading system. Um, you'll find how the percentage of the grades are broken down. So the discussion board, journal entries, audio posts, Various things make up attendance and participation. Your weekly quizzes are also heavily weighted, so these need to be taken seriously, as does your final paper. And oh, I just noticed an error in my syllabus that should say that the total is 100%, not 10. I will fix that in just a moment. I want to point out a couple of these policies that you see in every single syllabus, especially the one called Plagiarism and Cheating. This is an online course. You have access to a number of resources. However, any and all acts of plagiarism uh, will be caught. They're very easy to catch. I think students don't often realize that. And it is not beneficial to you. It is not beneficial to our course for you to be copying someone else's words, whether it's copying it directly, whether it is reading something, looking something up to answer the question, rather than uh, coming up with your own answer and then changing the words around a little bit. This is cheating and it will not be tolerated. You will receive a failing grade for anything where plagiarism or any other type of cheating is it has been used. So please think carefully about that and I'm very serious about it. Also, if you have any need for accommodation based on the impact of a disability, please let me know as well as contacting disability resources on campus. And then following that, you will find the very lengthy schedule. I've typed out everything here. You can also follow along on Blackboard itself. It's a very straightforward schedule, I think. I've tried to color code things as well to keep you, to keep everything in line. So you will see here, for example, module one, that's where we are right now. You need to have this finished by July 9th. There are two chapters of reading to do in the textbook. There is this video that you're watching right now, and also three activity boards. Please introduce yourself on the Facebook page. There's a link available on Blackboard. Then you'll find your first journal entry about writing about an experience you've had in a museum. And finally, the discussion board about what is art. And you'll find more of a prompt on Blackboard itself. So here you'll see the opening page of our Blackboard site. And of course, mine looks a little bit different than yours will look. But here you'll find any announcements. Uh, anything that I need to communicate to you, I will try to post here as well as be sure to send it via email. On the left, you'll see here all of the pertinent things, uh, announcements, course documents, including a syllabus and a paper assignment, a direct link to the vocabulary wiki where when you, when it's your group's turn, you'll be adding a page yourself to create this so you can go straight through here. Also a link to the larger discussion board where you can find the individual forms through there. And then you'll also find on the left side each of the six weeks of the course. And if you click on those, you will go to where the modules are kept. So I have week one open here. So for week one, you have three modules. And you'll see uh, the title of each as well as the date that you should have all of these things completed by. So any journal entry, any discussion board entry, any audio post, any self-assessments need to be done by midnight on these due dates. So if you were to click through, you would find uh, a module that looks like this. On the left, you'll find the table of contents. I've tried to organize them all the same way throughout just to be more straightforward, where you'll first find what the reading is and an attached reading if there is something outside of your textbook. 
Then you'll find a link to the video, um, always linked to YouTube. Then here for module one, we have the link to the course Facebook page, a link to the discussion board module, and information on your first journal entry. This is a little more simple than the later module. So for example, here's uh, module two, which needs to be completed by July 10th, if I'm remembering correctly. I have to cheat. Yes, July 10th. Um, so you'll find the reading here attached is the supplementary reading. Right now I don't have the video posted or the self-assessment posted, so that generic is just for me. That will look very different by the time this course actually begins. And then again, discussion board, information about the audio post, and the vocabulary wiki, which I am starting for this first week. So one of the things you need to do for this module is go to our course Facebook page. I have just begun it, so you'll just see me up here in front of this wall. Right now I have it set to closed. Uh, you should be able to add it without any problem though. Here you can ask any questions that you need, and we'll also have quick conversations here sometimes. So I suppose that is it for now. Uh, thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me via email. I'm looking forward to this uh, semester. I know this is probably the first online course for a lot of you, but I think that we're going to learn a lot together. Just be ready for a lot of deadlines uh, in a hurry. So see you soon.